grants, who is eligible, and where you can get yours still ahead. Meanwhile, for those who are not fully vaccinated, a new incentive to roll up your sleeve, how you can qualify for a gift card this noon. The weekend forecast looks incredible. We do have changes though next week, some rain chances, more humidity too. A look at that seven day forecast is coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. We have new video this noon. A man has learned the hard way that pedal power is no match for a motor. Castle Hills police say they quickly caught up to that suspect who led him on a chase while on his bicycle. As Katrina Weber reports, the man and his unusual attempt to escape also got caught on camera. It's not exactly prime time for a bike ride, and this is no casual spin. I'll be out with one on the bicycle behind 7115. Looks like he's taking it for me. This dash cam video from Castle Hills Police shows a man on a middle of the night mission to get away. Officers patrolling around Blanco Road and Loop 410 say they noticed him after three this morning near a business and fresh graffiti, wearing dark clothing, a face covering and gloves. To the CBD dispensaries. Um, and so it appeared to me that he was about to break into that building. But the man broke and ran, or rather rode, the minute they tried to stop him. He pedaled on and near a highway, through neighborhood streets, apparently taking time to signal along the way. While the idea of a chase involving a bicycle may sound unusual, police say they've actually seen it all, especially on the overnight shift. Third time that's actually happened, uh, yeah. The third time, it seems, was the charm. Police say the suspect was carrying a strange load. Notice the extra long crowbar in his hands, and that's not all. We did recover a tomahawk. He ended up throwing the tomahawk uh, during the pursuit. Um, so he did just dis dis discard it. This suspect, though, could not get away. Police caught up and took him down. In his bag, they say they found possible stolen items and cans of spray paint. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, University Health giving people a COVID-19 booster shot. It reopened its shot clinic at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall this morning. Jonathan Goto takes a look at who's eligible and how they can get their booster shot. Long lines at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall with folks from all over Bear County waiting for their COVID-19 booster. The Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine now authorized by the FDA. University Health's Chief Information Officer Bill Phillips says he wasn't expecting such a huge turnout. Very happy to see that the community is responding and that they do want a booster vaccine. So very excited to open our, our vaccine clinic back up again to support this community. Those eligible for the booster must have received the Pfizer vaccination only. It must be 65 years of age or older, 18 and older with underlying health conditions. Those eligible also include healthcare workers and others who are at a high risk of exposure. People in these groups are able to get the booster six months after their second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Carol Carson says she's waited close to two hours for her booster shot, but adds it was worth the wait. I think everyone should get their booster shot as soon as possible. The site is located on the upper level of the mall and will be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. University health officials say those wanting to get a shot should enter at the upper level exterior entrance on the west side of the mall. Anyone who received a vaccination through University Health can access their vaccine record through their MyChart app. They say vaccine verification can be easily accessed from your mobile device. You can see, folks, the line here continues to grow, and that's one thing University Health officials want to emphasize is there's no rush to get here. They say there is plenty of time and plenty of supply. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And once again, the Wonderland Mall vaccination site will be open until 6 o'clock this evening. Anyone 65 years and older and those who are at high risk are eligible. Next week, Metro Health will be giving out booster shots at the Alamo Dome. And if you still need to get your round of shots, Metro Health is hoping to convince you by giving away a $100 HEB gift card. The incentive will be offered for those receiving the one dose Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine or the second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine at Metro Health vaccination sites. 
The incentive will not be offered to those receiving their booster shots. There is no age limit for the gift cards, but those between 12 and 17 years old will need to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. We've got more information for you on our website, kz.com. And the potential need for booster shots apparent on The View just before the news at noon. Two hosts of The View having to leave the set because they had apparently a breakthrough case of COVID. The CDC director says, meantime, frontline workers at high risk of getting COVID-19 can also get their third shot of the Pfizer vaccine. ABC's Faith of Bay reports the decision partially overrules the CDC's advisory panel, which just last night said those workers should wait. A new wave of Americans who received the Pfizer COVID vaccine now have the green light to get a booster shot. This motion passed 15-0. Overnight, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky agreeing with an advisory panel to allow tens of thousands of Americans, including those in long-term care facilities, seniors 65 years and older, and others as young as 18 who have underlying health conditions, to get the third dose six months after their second Pfizer shot. Hard to acknowledge I'm over 65, but I'll be getting my booster shot. <laughs> It's a bear, isn't it? But in a surprise move, Dr. Walensky rejecting the panel's recommendation to leave out frontline workers for now, meaning right now teachers, daycare staff, grocery and healthcare workers can also get in line for the booster shots. This was the right move by CDC Director Walensky to look at the scenario and say, you know what, those people who are actually exposed to COVID-19 on a daily basis, such as those working in ER, deserve to have the, the eligibility to get boosters. Yes, it's a rare move, but it was a necessary one. The shots will start rolling out at more than 30,000 healthcare centers and pharmacies nationwide. But the U.S. is still far behind its goal to vaccinate the population. More than 13 million Americans, 65 and older, are six months late for their appointments to get their second dose. The White House also estimates another 71 million Americans eligible for the vaccines still haven't gotten a shot. Get vaccinated. It can save you life, your life. You save the lives of those around you. And as for those booster shots, the CDC says the dialogue continues. Scientists will keep reviewing the data and expand eligibility when appropriate, including for those who got the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson shots. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Today, the last day for early voting in the special election, voters are picking who will fill the seat for the former state representative Leo Pacheco of San Antonio. This person will represent District 118. It covers the southern and eastern parts of Bear County. You can take a look at the candidates and where you can cast your ballot on ksat.com. A reminder that Election Day is next Tuesday. A local middle school awarded a $5,000 grant. How it plans to use all that money still ahead. And Texans rookie Davis Mills accomplished something positive, especially for a rookie last night, even though they did lose to Carolina. Larry Ramirez with that coming up in sports. And the Castle Hills Police Department wants to highlight some of the issues that officers are facing when they're responding to traffic calls. What the department is doing to encourage drivers to stay alert after the break. We have some late breaking news for you this noon. We have just learned that all the migrants that were camped out in Del Rio are now gone. We are getting this update from the Val Verde Com County Commissioner. We've got a crew headed to Del Rio. Steve Spreester will be there and he will have the latest for us live tonight on KSAT 12 News at 5 and 6 and again on the night beat at 10. It is a job that 24 seven, but can also prove to be a dangerous one. The Castle Hills Police Department wants to show the community some of their issues that their officers are facing on the roadways. Your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, explains why CHPD is on a mission to stay transparent. Their job is to stay vigilant and to keep the community safe. But the Castle Hills Police Department is adding transparency to the list of duties. You may have seen dash cam videos like this posted on the CHPD Facebook page. Sergeant Ronald Singleton says it's part of an effort to show the community some of the issues they encounter. Let them see what we're actually doing out there on a day to day basis. That includes stalls, crashes and even high speed chases like this one. According to CHPD, there have been approximately 64 evading cases since the start of this year. The law enforcement agency is just one of a few that does pursue in Bear County. But Singleton adds each situation is different and it's up to each officer to make the responsible call. Most of our pursuit, as you have seen, uh, generally occur at nighttime and that's due to 
the low volume of traffic that's on the highway. However, Singleton says distracted drivers are another problem. He asked that drivers be considerate for the men and women in blue who are working to make the roadways a safer place. Just like any other time you see an emergency vehicle coming down the roadway, you pull over to the right side and you let them pass. CHPD hopes by sharing these videos, it will shed light on how quickly situations can escalate and why it's important drivers stay alert. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. The Castle Hills Police Department plans to expand their safety efforts by adding a traffic division in the near future. A local middle school will now be able to afford some new resources for teachers and students after they got a nice sized grant. Hotwell's Middle School awarded $5,000 to use on technology and materials to boost student achievement. The school's principal says the money is going to be put to good use and that it couldn't have come at a better time. It's going to be put to very great use because we are a new campus, as you know, so we don't have a lot of money, you know, as most established campuses do. So I'm going to be able to buy instructional resources for the students. And this gift would, would not have come at a very, like we really need that money at this time because we're getting more and more students coming into the school. The grant was awarded during the opening of a new Burlington Coat Factory store here in San Antonio. It was made possible through the store's partnership with the national nonprofit organization called Adopt a Classroom. It is Hispanic Heritage Month, and the Spanish language is part of that heritage. However, many generations have lost the language because their grandparents or parents didn't pass it on. But why is that? Some call it language assimilation, others language loss. But many agree that years ago in the 50s, 60s, and even 70s, Spanish was thought to be shameful. Dr. Maribel, Maribel Laraga, a professor at Our Lady of the Lake University, says it's because Spanish became a private language out of pain and shame. Your language is your identity, is who you are, just like food and you know, attirement and, you know, for some of us, the makeup, the hair, okay? Uh, and, and when somebody criticizes the way you speak or the way you say certain things, they are criticizing you as a person and, and that's who you are. But whether a person is fluent in Spanish, only knows a couple of words or mixes both English and Spanish in the same sentence, she says that Spanish is valid and important. Looking outside with live cam, another pretty day this morning. Was it even chillier than the day before? It was actually one degree warmer, but ah. splitting hairs here was incredible. We're going to have a couple more nice mornings like that before things change next week. A little bit more moisture heads our way. Hopefully, hopefully some rain in the forecast because the aquifer continues to drop. 657.6 today, down another tenth of a foot. We've been on a steady drop there. In your pollen count, we are in the midst of ragweed season. It continues to top the list at 640 in the high category. Molds are moderate. Fall elm, grass, pigweed all low. We'll look ahead to our rain chances next week. Coming up. All right, I know it's beautiful. We had a great week of weather. Cool in the morning, a little warm in the afternoon. Nice, but I don't want to be David Downer. We need some rain. You know, those cracks in the clay, yep. dirt, you're beginning to see that now. David Downer. Uh, yes, I you guys are exactly it. right. It's, it's, it's a fair point because most of September has been pretty quiet as far as rainfall goes. And this weather is great. We'll take it for a couple days here. My hope, though, is that we will get some rain back in the forecast by early next week and kind of help us out here. Of note, we've only received about 36 hundredths of an inch of rain this month. That is well below average. And you see there's only uh, four days there where we actually received measurable rainfall, at least at the airport. But some question marks there, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. I think that's a period where we could see some rain and maybe add to this total a little bit. Also of note, we're at 23.63 for the year. That is now officially below average for the year. So we've fallen back below that mark. And uh, looking at temperatures this morning, boy, it was a great start. Uh, it is going to be a gorgeous day today. 48 in Kerrville, 48 burning stage. We got down to 57 here in San Antonio, 52 in Kerrville. Clear skies, light winds, good situation where we had radiational cooling. We'll get that again tomorrow morning and probably some Sunday morning too. Down to 52, Carissa Springs, 55 in Gonzales. And we've got clear skies now, not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures at 78 at the airport. South southeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. There, uh, the, the dew point has come up just a little bit. It's at 53, but it's still really not noticeable, the humidity that is. 
And temperatures, 76 Canyon Lake, 81 near Bronfield, 75 Lost Maples. You're at 81 in Carrizo Springs and 83 down there in Catula. Some places down to the south of San Antonio. Certainly we'll get up to around 90 today. I think we stay in the 80s here in town. We mentioned those dew points. They fall off into the low 50s and 40s today. There will be a little bit of a climb in the dew points. I, I think we stay in the pleasant range through Sunday. But by Monday morning, you'll be able to feel the difference. Moisture comes back into play. And we'll get dew points in the 60s and maybe even 70s Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as the storm system moves a little bit closer, pumps into moisture, and again, maybe, maybe develops a little bit of rain. Forecast for today takes us up to about 88 for a high. Sunny skies, football games tonight, perfect. They look great. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. By the time we get to uh, maybe halftime, those games will be in the 70s. That's beautiful. And by tomorrow morning, We'll be in the low 60s to start. We've got head for the cure tomorrow morning. Great running weather. Really will be another great start to the weekend. If you have outdoor plans this weekend, you, you can't beat this kind of weather. Now, I mentioned the increasing humidity next week. Here are our morning lows. We'll be at 61 tomorrow morning, 63 Sunday. But by Monday, you see those morning lows start to creep up above average. And those crisp mornings will essentially go away. We'll start to see some cloud cover during the morning time too next week. So one system departing, this is the system that brought us the front. It's producing showers and storms along the east coast, a little bit of rain across parts of Minnesota. And then you'll notice there's some rain down here across the desert southwest. This is the storm system we're gonna watch uh, to uh, move in next week. Uh, and as we look at the forecast here, it's actually gonna push back to the west a little bit and then start to slowly make its way east. It'll Tap into some of that moisture on Monday, maybe just an isolated shower or storm, but a little better chance Tuesday and Wednesday as the storm system's closer and we get a little more lift around here. Some scattered showers and storms as it stands right now, maybe some decent downpours. Uh, the forecast, low humidity, 88 today, 89 tomorrow, 91 Sunday, 20% chance of rain Monday, 30% chance Tuesday, and a 40% shot of rain on Wednesday, guys. Thanks, Justin. And just for the record, Justin Horn did not look at the teleprompter even one time, Larry. I know. He's amazing at ad-libbing. All of our meteorologists, that's all they do is ad-lib, yes. and they're great at it. Thank I know, you. but that's why we don't read the prompter when we're talking to you. I love it. I love it. So I, <laughs> He said I had to. <laughs> I was going to read the prompter because you gave us a lesson yesterday and how we should read the prompter. So I was going to say we should just read the prompter. I know you want to read BGC the prompter. BGC last night, Smithson Valley at New Braunfels, 27-6A, and Carolina Panthers suffered a key injury. Go there ahead, you Larry, go. Take it we away. have those two stories coming up <laughs> next in sports. The Mighty Rangers are certainly a tough out, and the Panthers, well, they suffered a brutal blow last night. Way coming. to go, Larry. We'll do your job for you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Smithson Valley at New Braunfels last night in District 27 6A action. Our case at 12 Meet TV Texas Sports Production Game of the Week. First quarter, Unicorns QB Aiden Bauman throws a high arcing lob to Lance Beagley for a nice grab over to the defender for a touchdown. 7 0 Unicorns. But the Rangers aren't down for long. The ensuing kickoff will be fielded by Braden Baffidis and look at him slice his way through the defense down the near sideline before cutting back on his way to the 95 yard touchdown, tying this at 7 all. And Smithson Valley remains undefeated 41 24. To the Gucci Bowl now, a district game between the Clark Cougars and Churchill Chargers. Clark on the move, Nick Lee on the bootleg, and he spots tight end Cameron Adams down the field for a big game. Big gain. A little later, running back Chris Gertz is going to cap off this drive with an 11 yard touchdown run to his left. 7 0 Cougars, and Clark wins by a shutout 17 zip. To the Gus we go. It's the Holmes Huskies taking on the undefeated John Jay Mustangs, who had last weekend off. Holmes quarterback Christopher Medellez to Ernie Solis on the sideline and check out the sweet move to slip by the defender on his way to a 25 yard touchdown. The final from the Gus. Holmes is smiling 41 14. Memorial leading 20 to 10 against Highlands in the second quarter at the Rock pile and they're adding to that lead running back Alex Villarreal goes right through the D on a 13 yard score Memorial takes a 17 point lead and Memorial holds on to win 34 to 30. The West Campus Cougars host the New Braunfels Piper Warriors at South Sand Stadium. Piper ball third quarter Jake stretch in with the play action pass over the middle to a wide open Jacks the grand six yard touchdown makes it 36 nothing Warriors. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard now for that final. And Piper takes it 57 to nothing. Holy Cross falls 42 to zero. And Harlan defeats Taft, or actually Taft defeats Harlan, excuse me, 42-35. That was an excellent football game.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Texans rookie QB Davis Mills making his first NFL start last night versus the Panthers on Thursday Night Football. Panthers strike first. QB Sam Darnold scores on this five-yard touchdown to go up 7-0. Texans answer Mills to Anthony Miller to cap off a seven-play 65-yard drive, but the point after attempt by Joey Sly is wide to the right. And it's 7-6 Panthers. Third quarter, same score. Panthers have first and goal. And they hand it off to tight end uh, Tommy Trimble coming in motion. He gets in for the touchdown. Panthers win 24-9. Mills went 19 for 28 for 168 yards. One touchdown with no turnovers. We did well at the start. Just um, moving the ball, trying to spread it out with some easy throws. Um, try to develop the run game. Um, I mean, overall, I felt comfortable out there. I was ready to make plays with the guys around me. Panthers lead running back Christian McCaffrey left the game in the second quarter with a strained hamstring. He suffered on this plane. He did not return. So Carolina is 3-0. and Houston is now 1-2. and And coming up later in sports, and I might not put this in prompter for you guys, Manu Ginobili is coming back to the Spurs. Oh. I have that for you. Yeah. Ooh, right. now that's a tease. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Now to that mass shooting at a Kroger supermarket in Tennessee that left one person dead and at least 14 others injured. The gunman died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound and survivors are speaking out about the terrifying moments when he opened fire. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. It was just another Thursday afternoon at a local grocery store in Collierville, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis, when suddenly bullets began to fly. It is a shooting with injuries. No further information this time. It's on the scene. Just walked in on a Thursday to buy a potato and an onion to make soup for dinner and was in the back and I heard the initial pop of the gun. Workers and customers running for their lives at Kroger's supermarket, hiding in freezers and offices. Sarah Wiles ducked for cover in a stock room with several others. We did hear the shooter in the back walking up and down the hall shooting. Wiles is a trained ICU nurse and jumped in to help as soon as she could. Went around and helped check on people and asked them how they were doing and made sure that people were conscious. This employee rescued from the roof. Another watched in horror as her co-workers were shot. And he kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my co-workers in the head and then shot one of the customers in the stomach. Jean Prost was working in the produce section when the chaos broke out. They kept on shooting and oh my gosh, this is uh, this is horrifying. This is horrifying. Uh, I'm going to die. Police say 70 year old Olivia King was killed. Her son releasing a statement saying in part, our family is devastated by this senseless act of violence. Authorities say the gunman shot and killed himself. I'm not going to give you his name today. I'm not giving him notoriety in this platform. Uh, was he an employee? He was a third party vendor for Kroger. The country is seeing a surge in gun violence, specifically when it comes to mass shootings. There's been a 35% increase in the number of people killed in mass shootings so far this year compared to the same time period last year. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin filing an appeal for his conviction in the death of George Floyd. Chauvin was convicted in April on charges of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. He was sentenced in June to 20, 22 and a half years in prison. Chauvin raised 14 issues in this appeal. They include that the district court's handling of the motion to change the venue, motions to sequester the jury during the trial and the motion for a continuance. He also took issue with the adding of a third degree murder charge during the trial. The appeal was filed with the state of Minnesota Court of Appeals. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer expected to hold a procedural vote Monday on a plan to keep the government open. It's likely to fail because it also raises the debt limit and Republicans don't want the U.S. to borrow more money when it already owes more than $28 trillion. But not increasing the debt ceiling could lead to some other problems. The U.S. wouldn't be able to pay its creditors on time and would default on some obligations. Look at outside with live cam. It's just really nice today. And it was yesterday and it will be one more day. We'll give it two. We'll give it the entire give it two day. Give, oh, oh, thanks. You guys got big plans this weekend? 
Well, apparently we need to make some. Right. We've got head for the cure on Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, the weather will be perfect for that. And whatever plans you have outdoors this weekend, it is looking really nice. Uh, this is also really nice. Take a look at this picture. This is from Pearsall Park here in San Antonio, uh, right at the trailhead. That That's a cool perspective. Kind of looking through the grass there. I believe that is uh, yesterday's, uh, this, the, this morning's sunrise. Really pretty shot. We appreciate it. We love those pictures on our KSAT Connect. Keep sending them in. You can do that on our KSAT weather app. Uh, there's a, uh, a button right at the bottom of the app that you can push and send those, those photos in. 75 right now, Bernie Stage, 80 in Comfort, 80 in Bandera, 83 Stenson, 79, Randolph, 78 in Seguin. So things are starting to warm up after a cool morning. We were in the 40s and 50s again this morning. And if you're planning on going out to some of the football games, uh, this is good weather. Yeah, last night was fantastic. Tonight will be equally as good. Clear and beautiful. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. 80 degrees at kickoff, 73 at halftime with the sunset at 728. How about the weekend? We mentioned good weather. It will be warm. Temperatures will be in the 90s or upper 80s, uh, I should say, Saturday and Sunday. That shows Sunday and Monday. But Saturday will be in the upper 80s, 91 Sunday. And then we will get into a little bit more cloud cover on Monday, guys. And as we said, Justin, tomorrow is the eighth annual Head for the Cure 5K Run and Walk. Hundreds of runners are going to be lining up downtown or virtually to help raise awareness about brain cancer and raise some funds for the research. Brain cancer affects thousands of families each year. And here at KSAT, we lost our news director, Jim Boyle, to brain cancer in early 2014. This event starts at 8 tomorrow morning at Providence High School. And if you'd like some more information on how to participate or donate, we encourage you to go to the KSAT community section of KSAT.com. The Salvation Army needs your help. Right now, the annual Angel Tree program doesn't have a home. Normally, the distribution hub for the program is based out of San Antonio, the event center here. However, after a change in ownership at the facility, the Salvation Army needs to find a new location. It's looking for a facility that has at least 55,000 square feet, along with air conditioning and heating. The organization says it's willing to pay for the space. If you know of a location to help them out, give them a call, 210-352-352. 2000. All right, get ready, you cool cats and kittens. The Tiger King story is not over yet. How Netflix is giving people more of this hit series. And Larry Ramirez is headed on the road tonight for big game coverage. One of the teams is McCullum. He's got a look at the Cowboys coming up. And a documentary shedding some new light on the conservatorship that Britney Spears is currently under. What one former employee is now saying about what he witnessed. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Facebook's global head of safety heading to Congress next week. Antigone Davis will testify before the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Consumer Protection that regarding the social media giant's impact on users' mental health. This comes after the Wall Street Journal published a series of bombshell reports, including Facebook's knowledge that their app Instagram has had a negative impact on teenage girls' mental health. Meanwhile, Salesforce boosting their full year sales outlook. That is, the pandemic continues to increase demand for cloud based services. The software giant raising their guidance to $26.3 billion range, and they're not stopping there. The company expects even more growth the following fiscal year, expecting revenue in the $31.8 billion range. And Southwest announcing they'll trim their flight schedule next year, that in order to avoid flight disruptions that they saw earlier this summer. The airline says that they're about halfway to their target of hiring 10,000 workers through next year. Staffing shortages at Southwest were partially to blame for hundreds of cancellations, delays, and other problems earlier this season that is travel picked up for summer vacation. And that's Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The makers of a documentary about Britney Spears and the conservative ship 
She's Under, now releasing another film about the pop star. It features insiders who have come forward for the first time detailing how the superstar's conservatorship works. Some of the people interviewed claim there was intense surveillance set up to monitor her whole life. A former employee from the security team monitoring Spears says the conservatorship went to great lengths to keep track of her, including recording her. Idan and one of the agents working with him came into my office and handed me the audio recording device and a USB drive and asked me to wipe it. I had them tell me what was on it. They seemed very nervous and said that it was extremely sensitive. I did not want to be complicit in whatever they were involved in, so I kept a copy because I don't want to delete evidence. The New York Times presents Controlling Britney Spears. It airs tonight at 9 on FX, and you can stream it on Hulu. Tiger King is returning to Netflix. The streaming device, or service rather, announced that it is working on Tiger King 2. The second season of the docuseries has already been shot and is slated for release sometime this year. Netflix has not shared if any of the people from the first season will be featured. Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness told the story of Joe Exotic who kept big cats in Oklahoma. I know you watched it. Yeah, right? I agree. I did too. Okay, his murder for hire plot against Carol Baskin, the owner of a rival facility, but the documentary series created a lot of buzz for Netflix and made some people involved overnight celebrities. I'm ready for a second dose. Okay. You can have it. It may not <laughs> feel like Christmas outside, but you can make it sound like Christmas by blasting holiday music. And Kelly Clarkson is hoping that you do it because she just released a new Christmas single. She unveiled the new song yesterday. It is called Christmas is not canceled. Just you. <laughs> it's about a woman who won't let her ex ruin her Christmas, mm. New Year's or anything else. Is that somewhere close to home on that one? I think that's hilarious. The song will be featured on a new album. It comes out on October 15th. It's called When Christmas Comes Around and features collaborations with singers like Ariana Grande and Chris Stapleton. Well, that's kind of a thing, though. You know, you sing about your... Your life. ex. There's not a cloud in the sky. There wasn't a cloud in the sky at noon yesterday. I, was there a cloud last night sometime that I, that I didn't see? Uh, I, I didn't see any, no. I didn't either. Yeah, you got to Because it was dark. Hard. <laughs> well, there's that too. Uh, but there was no cloud cover and it allowed temperatures to fall this morning down to 57. That is 10 degrees below the average. 78 is the high so far today. We should rise to about average, which is 88. 102 is a record set back in 2005. Thankfully, we're nowhere near that. We did come within six degrees of the record low, 51, set back in 1947. It's more great weather over the weekend. We're also going to check in on the tropics. We've got a new hurricane out there. We'll let you know what it is coming up. So I have to share this. This is my litmus test for temperatures. I don't need a thermometer. Okay. Because this morning I went out to ride a horse like I generally do at the crack of dawn. And today I did not have to wash him afterward because he did not sweat. So that's how you know. I never thought. <laughs> <laughs> never thought that, never that, thought that means it's cool it that way, and it's dry. I like now, that. now I know. Yeah. That is See? interesting information. So yeah. now you can just ask whether or not she had to wash and dry her horse, and then you'll know if it was cool or hot. There you go. Yeah. Uh, it Put was him back. He's absolutely dry. Perfect. <laughs> it was cool awesome. then. It, well, it was perfect this morning. I mean, we got down to 57 again. Yesterday was 56, so we were right on par with yesterday. And we're going to see a couple more mornings like that. Before we jump into more of those beautiful mornings, well, let's talk about the tropics. We do have a hurricane out there. Hurricane Sam. Winds are at 75 miles per hour, gusting to 90, moving west at 14 miles per hour. And uh, it looks pretty good there on satellite pictures. Kind of a, a compact storm and it's moving slow. It's going to take a long time for this to really go anywhere. It's going to stay out over the open ocean for a while, but we do think this is going to become a major hurricane. Winds potentially as high as 130 miles per hour. And by the end of the forecast track here, there are still some questions as to what will happen next. We're going to have to kind of wait and see here, but uh, it's going to sit out there for a while and really gain some strength. We'll keep you posted. I, I don't think it'll be an issue for us, but uh, it is out there, and as we look at the uh, activity during hurricane season, we are past the peak. 
September 10th is the peak of hurricane season. It starts to wind down a little bit as we get into October. Doesn't mean we still can't see tropical weather. We certainly have, and it's certainly possible. But right now, it's just uh, it's just Sam out there. There are a couple other spots Hurricane Center is watching where there could be some potential development. Certainly not tropical feeling here today. We've got clear skies and dry air. 78 at the airport, 83 Stinson, 80 at Kelly, 79 at Randolph. And a south southeasterly breeze officially at the airport, but it's been light most of today. No cloud cover over Bear County. We're at 75 Bernie stage up to 81 now in New Braunfels, 84 down there in Pleasanton. And uh, there is a little bit of cloud coverage to get closer to the coast. Just some fair weather cumulus clouds, though. No big deal. 82 in Victoria, with mostly sunny skies there. A few thin high clouds working through Junction, where it is 79 degrees. Dew points are in the 40s and 50s. These are up just a little bit from what we've seen last couple of days, but not enough to really create a noticeable difference. Uh, you're still in the pleasant category here in the 50s, and I think these numbers actually drop a little bit as we get into this afternoon and this evening. So it'll still feel very, very nice. Forecast calls for a high right around 88. We'll reach that around 4 or 5 o'clock, and then temperatures will fall from there into the 70s, eventually 60s by midnight, and into the low 60s for tomorrow morning. Again, winds will remain fairly light. We should see mostly clear skies. So another great start uh, to the day tomorrow. Temperature-wise across the country really looks pretty good. You've got 60s up across the northern tier states, uh, 70s and 80s here in Texas, and pretty comfortable weather behind that front. It's swept through most of the country. The warmest stuff is down there in the, de in the desert southwest, where it's 83 in Vegas, 80 right now in Phoenix. And it's this storm system down here, this area of low pressure, which is starting to kind of push back to the west a little bit. You can see some of the rain there in parts of southwestern Arizona that is going to be a weather maker for us down the line. It's going to sit out there for a little while, but then push east by Monday, creating a couple of isolated showers and storms. A little better chance Tuesday into Wednesday as we get some more lift, deeper moisture in here. Can't guarantee that we're going to get a ton of rain out of this, but it's looking somewhat promising. Low humidity next few days, 88 today, 89 Saturday, 91 Sunday, and then the rain chances kick in. 20% chance Monday, 30% chance Tuesday, and a 40% chance of rain on Wednesday with a high of 88. We'll be right back. At 4-0, the Marion Bulldogs can make some pretty cool history this week. If they can beat Lytle, they'll become the first team in program history to start off 5-0. The Bulldogs had to come from 10 points down in the fourth quarter against Hondo to beat the Owls last Friday, 35-31. And now the dogs have a shot at history. There's never been a team that's gone through uh, Marion that's gone 5-0, and and we feel like we've got a great opportunity, and our kids have been working hard all week, and so it's just, you know, the community's rallying behind it, and all the kids, obviously, are excited about it, and uh, just kind of, we always talk about our seniors uh, leaving that legacy, and uh, right now, uh, they're kind of on track, and uh, really been putting in a lot of work this, uh, this year and this week, and uh, they're excited for this opportunity to go 5-0, and the first time in school history. It's very cool, you know, to be a part of a team that can do that and just show, you know, who Marion is. That's what's very cool to be a part of you know that's awesome like that's never happened in marion history and we've had some really good teams run through here so i think with all the seniors we have and as hard as we work at practice i think it's definitely something that we can accomplish marion will go for history tonight at 7 30 when they host lytle in the district opener for both now at two and two and the mccollum cowboys will play dripping springs tonight part of our three game bgc road trip the cowboys remain confident and despite two straight losses coach says his guys are playing hard the entire game we're getting better uh we're improving that was our our major goal and objective uh you know you always want to get more wins um we're at 500 and we need to break out and do something in district and uh, you know that's a big challenge we're playing really good football teams we worked since i've been a varsity since sophomore year man it's been feeling great and we needed those two wins to set us off for our senior year three years on varsity and then all losing to have those two wins back to back it was a great feeling everyone was pumped it brought a confidence to the team i guess would say sometimes it feels heavy sometimes it feels awesome like when we were 2-0 and and then Everyone was supporting us, everyone's talking, and then we lose a couple games, and then everyone's bad mouthing us again, but it's fine. Here's the BGC road trip tonight McCollum at Dripping Springs, Alamo Heights at Wimberley, and Three Rivers visiting Blanco. In Major League Baseball, the Angels beat the Astros 3 2, so Houston's magic number remains 3, and the Orioles shut out the Rangers 3 0. 
And the big news, the one and only Manu Ginobili is coming back to the silver and black. He is joining the Spurs front office as special advisor to basketball operations. Ginobili returns to the Spurs following a 16-year playing career with San Antonio, where he helped the silver and black capture four NBA championships. And how about this? Manu is also eligible for the Ooh. Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2022. Mm. Do we nominate him? <laughs> it's, it's foregone conclusion. <laughs> He's in. He's going to get in, yes. Good. All right, going all the way to Dripping Springs. Dripping Springs, yeah. Be careful. Hey, we might swing by your house on the all way right. down and say hi. I got some dinner. <laughs> Come on. I got some exotic dip brewing my wife is making for tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to have to give that recipe to SA Live. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> have your wife be a guest on the show. We'll eat it. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. You can get your whole family into the fall spirit with fun projects you can do together. Yep. And our dear friend Jennifer Nicolella from Abby's Attic is here. And these great little crafts for the kids and the grown-ups. And you've got a neat coaster over there. Yes. Five little pieces of fabric. You can use it for a mug rug. Or my favorite, you can put it around the bottom of your wine glass. It's Friday, 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yes. Simple to make. <laughs> and it's an adventure that's 65 million years in the making. Jen's out there at Jurassic Quest. Yes, you can expect a dino mite time when you come here. Now the exhibit's behind us, but this right here is part of the fun when you come to Jurassic Quest, something that you can take part of this weekend. I'm gonna go look for more dinosaurs, guys. Back to you, my new friend. I like the dino mite time there. Hey, <laughs> Halloween, it's spooky out there at SeaWorld. <laughs> yes, and they've got something for the kids during the day with spectacular, and of course, Hallow Scream at night and we take you there and check out some of the haunts. How about going to Hawaii, or a little taste of Hawaii? We've got Wow Wow Lemonade, these great recipes there. Also, it is fall, the perfect fall day. What is it? Let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see how that shakes down in a few minutes.